What's going on guys? What's cracking? Back in the garage. Uh, I think this is episode three. Well, I'm not even sure which one I'm on at this point, but um, what we're doing right now is removing some stuff. So I've got the fuel filter out. I'm gonna open that up in this video. Uh, go over a couple things. I wanted to show you guys the bypass, but the biggest thing is this. This is my power, okay? And this is how I had it ran for, oh my God, years now. Um, this is what was giving battery power from my battery in the back here. I was running it up here with the triple pump hanger, um, or triple pump, the triple hanger uh, from Powerhouse Racing. I actually used the one side for the power. Some people don't like it, some say it was so dangerous, this and that. So they're here or there. Uh, Colton's is this way too. I'm removing it because I'm gonna tuck it inside the car now for the way I need to run it. I also need to get rid of this. This was the power for the uh, transmission I was using back in the day. It's gonna pull that back inside the car because that's no longer needed. And little things like that. I need to get a plug for here, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this, which, shove that on in there, get that, get that on up in there. And I'm gonna get a plug, and plug this up here, cause that's no longer needed. So let's see this here, see if I can get this off. Yeah, put that up in there. And I'm gonna need to get a plug for that guy right there. You see, this is what I was using. Sorry, I got natural light in here, so it's throwing things off. But yeah, so see where the transmission hit there too when I was trying to get it in. This is actually a good time to show you like, that transmission is a tight fit, okay? Anyone tells you it's not is a liar. It is a tight Mofong fit. Uh, you can see up there too, very tight, but uh, it's worth it to make the power. So like I was saying guys, I'm just gonna remove that. You see it coming from the back, coming up. Uh, again, I don't know what to do with this car because I've got two Supras, I've got two budgets, I've got two things to build at the same time. I keep overextending myself. I'm, I'm always honest, like people think of like all this money, but I mean, it is a lot with sponsorships and a lot with me being, you know, good with my money and trying to make every dollar count and stretch, right? I mean, trying to build two Supras and there's a reason why they're both NA, they weren't original turbos, so on and so forth. This car is obviously going to need tires soon. Um, it, it, I mean, that one there is down to the wear bar. This one's really close. So, I mean, it's time for tires. They wore, they wore really nicely. Big shout out to BBS GTR. Also, Brandon Bless is his real name. Um, he lined the car, and it, it tracks really well. I'm a huge fan of these r eight rs but they don't last very long, especially for someone like myself who drives a good bit. And then you, when you have traction control, I don't do burnouts or anything, but it just chews them up real quick and in a hurry. So... Things like that you just gotta be cognitive of. Um, but things in the car need updated, like this is all just dirty, and just needs cleaned up. Um, yeah, uh, this car does actually have tightened sway bars too. Most people don't realize that. I have tightened sway bars I've put on it from like 10 years ago. Uh, I've got these white line end links and stuff. I don't even think I have it adjusted properly. I'd like to do like Tony at Stan Stagger Media and uh, kind of get some adjustment done, get it like uh, lined properly. Uh, you get the Ford 8.8 in there. Um, but yeah, so you can see the fuel lines. I made these little brackets here too. I drilled these out the whole way through. They're not designed to go the whole way through. So I drilled them out in the backside so it could hold fuel line the whole way up. It used to have zip ties, but I think this looks better. Um, the only place I have zip ties now is up here at the very top. Cause even back here, I made one of these also. So it holds it there and then it goes inside the tank. So you don't need any more. I just think it looks nicer. I know you don't see it and it just gives me a little peace of mind. It's not rubbing against each other. I don't know. It's, it's probably stupid, but I like having it that way. So again, taking these out, gotta undo these little plastic nuts. One thing I saved from Twitter that was dumb. I wish this would have been a bolt up inside the chassis and not these. They have a stud that comes out with almost like a screw style thread, not like a bolt thread like this. It's literally like a screw. So you use these stupid plastic clips. I actually have extra cause these tend to break. I have like four or five extra cause I've broken so many over the years. I'm like, screw it, not having that issue again. So yeah. So let's go ahead and get these off and uh, get this wiring out and then take it out off the top. So guys, I didn't record it there yesterday. Uh, it was cold and I was in a rush with the kids, but I power washed the engine bay. It doesn't look like it did much, but this was all really bad down here. Um, and still got the AC pump on it. Again, everyone keeps saying paint it. It's not gonna happen. I, I might maybe, maybe, maybe change my mind, but I highly doubt it. I'm just, uh, I don't see the need for it at this time. Uh, it is dirty, don't get me wrong. Uh, it is, you know, not as nice as it could be, but there's just other things I wanna spend my time, money, and effort on. I am gonna take the brake booster off though and get that painted at least uh, while I've got some time here. But everything else, I'm just gonna kinda leave it as is uh, because I just wanna kinda drive and enjoy this car. I don't worry about it as much that way. Uh, I did clean up the stuff. Like I said, I took a brush to everything. So physically, it's clean, right? There's no dirt when I take my hand off of it but the paint itself from the factory is just kind of me. Uh, I got some area back there I got to scrub and clean up yet, but for the most part, I got this, and then we're gonna dry ice blast the rest of this. Yes, that's right. So John Perdue at uh, TLC Auto Detailing is gonna come up, we're gonna actually dry ice blast this thing. I've seen the videos, but I've never really done it before, so I'm kind of intrigued. 
Uh, the underside of this isn't perfect. It's far from it. It just, it's always been coated in grease and I've really been trying to scrub it myself and try to get it off and some of it just won't come off. Took like 2,000, 2,500 PSI power washer, still wouldn't come off, scrubbing with a brush. This is almost, it's like an abrasive, but not. Uh, and it does no residue because it's water, right? And it's dry ice, so it's like vapor. So pretty neat, I'm gonna give this a shot. Again, thank you, John, for doing so. So I wanna get the underneath done so well, just for the fact that I can find oil leaks or anything of that nature. My wife's is pretty bad too, it needs really done. Um, so yeah, I'm really kinda excited for that, just to get all of it off, because all these years it's just been everywhere, and it's been so upsetting to me that it's like just disgusting. So I'm kind of, I kind of, I am very excited to see what it looks like when it's all said and done. But that's neither here nor there, let's take this brake booster off next. For the booster here, I'm just going to remove these two lines here and then kind of push it off to the side and I'll have to put some in here because it's going to leak. Then take these two uh, 12 millimeter bolts off, pull this off and that at least gets that off, the master. And then I have to go inside and take the booster out. Now, getting the booster out is not fun. Yeah, I usually have to drop the steering column, which I don't like doing. Um, again, something else I don't enjoy to do, but it, it needs to be done to do this. Um, so yeah, so that's on my list of things to do today. So let's get to it. Wanted to show this too. Just want to take the fuel filter out, take a look at it. Um, but it again looks good. So I just, it's insane that I'm not getting any buildup with ED5. Like I always hold, hold, heard all these horror stories about ED5 and then sitting in the tank. And this is a 10 micron filter. Like this is tiny. It's very, very tiny. And it's like nothing. I just, I've heard all those congealing issues and stuff. I just don't get it. Like the car literally just ran Till now, I just put a little bit of 93 in because I knew to take the car apart and then I'm gonna take the filters out. So I was like, well, I'll put 93 in it at least. But it hasn't had 93 in it in years. And it just doesn't, I don't get it, man. I don't get congealing or don't have any problems at least. And I run nothing with ED5, pump ED5. Very weird, but yeah. So I'm gonna put it back together now and should be good for, I guess, a couple more years to go. So it makes me happy. Um, yeah, it makes me really happy. I'm just gonna put this cap on it to keep some of the fuel smell out of here. But next up is taking the brake booster off. But I just wanted to show you guys that. All right, so next up, what I'm doing here, guys, is the power steering. So it was already set up, so this fitting's already done. You can see it, it uh, the lines probably see some better days here. It's actually really stiff and hard. Um, this one here, I am going to cut down. So I just slipped this over the original fitting here. So if you can see here, this is a 17 millimeter fitting. Came off and you just had a slip on hose. This was the high pressure hose I had from Drift Motion. I'll never understand why Drift Motion had this long ass hose on it, but they did. Um, when I got it, I was like, what the hell? It literally went out past, wrapped around my, um, oh shoot, uh, oil filter and everything, which is way too long. So I'm using the powerhouse racing setup that I have on my wife's, which is more direct, shorter, and perfect for this. Um, and I'm gonna run this directly down end to the rack now with the powerhouse racing fitting too. This is supposed to be an M17 and a half. Uh, yeah, weird, right? Uh, powerhouse racing said it's something weird so i got an extra one for when this time came so it's already here makes it easy then use a dash six fitting at the bottom straight and i already have a nine up there so that's why i said i literally get to cut down this hose add that and put it on um i use 120 degree fitting up here which you're like ryan why do you do that well with this if we look here at my wife's car you can see i have it 120 degree because i actually have to have it bend it back because it was so close out here it was uh touching the manifold and it doesn't seem like it, but when you straighten it out some, it actually touches here. So this gives me a little bit more room. I'm able to angle it off to the side over to this way a little bit more. It seems dumb, but it does work. I also have to put a small hole to move it even closer and I have to remove the bottom bracket. Now that's with my intake manifold, these MCC loyalty. Again, it's just like anything else. The gritty ones are even worse, but this does fit with the fuse box location, no drilling, no moving of that factory location, even with drive-by wire. So it does work well. So to do this, I'm just gonna kind of bring this over for now and set it up like how I think it should be. So it should be like sitting somewhere. Man, I have so much extra hose here now, it's unreal. Cause it'll sit like that, right? And then that should give me more than enough to not be able to angle this down, up and over. Oops. Come on, you son of a bitch. You bastard, you, you, you motherfucker. You get my dog. Please tell me you guys know that reference. Please, am I getting that, I'm getting that old. I'm, I'm that guy now. You get my dog, you bastard. Stay. Stay. All right, guys, so with the mounting here, I put this up because it was dripping down, but that is your um, one that goes from the pump. So when you put your power steering pump back on, so let me get this to focus here. When you get your power steering pump back on, this one here, that's the one that is going to go to the pump. 
right? The high pressure line. This one here goes from the tank over to that. So take this fitting right here and it goes like show. Now, when I do the powerhouse racing setup also, uh, they comes with a new fitting. So I'll most likely replace that too. So it'll be black on black down here and put it on like so. And now I just got to crank it down and get my dash six fitting on it. Um, so if you can see here from the side, yeah, so yeah, that'll uh, make it a little bit easier. And again, I'm just gonna have to figure out the line length here and run it back to it. Not very hard to do. So with everything mounted up, what I like to do is mount it here. So you see it comes down curves. And again, it has to be so close here because of um, the way the intake manifold is. Usually I would have it curve out more, but I like to put the fitting on the rack, then the dash six fitting. And the reason for that is I like to see exactly where this hose is going to run. So right there, you see the silver mark. It's gonna go down into this fitting to about here, right? So if we can get a little bit closer here, let's focus on this a little bit more. Right about here, so about three quarters of this fitting is hose, the rest is actually for threading. So I just wanna show you guys that. So it goes down into there pretty darn far, okay? And I like to mark it with a silver Sharpie then, and then see where it needs to be. I don't want too much tension on it, you want it to be able to wiggle, move, but that's just the easiest way to do it. And then you just cut the hose, I have a pair of cutters, and then put the fittings on. I personally like doing this. Uh, so me and Jose Valle always, I should say get into it, me and him are like close. Um, but you know, he's big on XRP, I use kind of whatever, I have to be honest, like Red Horse really has helped me with this, but I've always just used kind of whatever of the years. Red Horse was the first one I've ever used, and I've kind of stuck with that for the most part. I have some rice flux on my car, but for the most part, her car, my car, is all Red Horse. He's big on XRP and crimping everything. Red Horse allows you to do that too. I personally like these twist on and off fittings, as long as it's not high pressure. I've never had them leak, I've never had a problem, and I like being able to play with it. Like I put it on and go, mm, it could be adjusted some. I could take the fitting back off, cut the hose slightly, and adjust it down. I like it because I can perfect it that much more. I'm able to, I don't know, play with it more. Maybe I'm doing it wrong, um, but I personally prefer these. I think they also look a little bit better. Again, personal opinion, and I actually like making the lines. I, I enjoy it. I genuinely enjoy doing this. Um, I think it's fun getting in like the lines perfect and making it look pretty. That's why I like my fuel lines. I feel like I did a really good job of how I tucked everything. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I truly enjoy it. But I'll shut up now. I'm going to cut this, put it on, and then I'm going to take it off because I'm not going to leave it on the car. But at least it's done, so I need to reassemble. I already have this knocked out. All right, guys. I'm going to try and get my big ass head under here and also try and record this. See if I can get my head under here. But all right. So there is the two left bolts to the brake booster. There's the bottom bolt, and then there is this top bolt up, I can't feel right there. So this bottom bolt here to the right, you'll see has a black bar that goes to it. Well, behind that black bar on the face there, there's another nut behind that nut. Toyota's infinite wisdom was that, hey, when we do this, let's make it that you have to drop the entire steering column and everything to pull this black bar out. So on my wife's car, I put a washer behind it so I'll never have to do this again. And um, yeah, fuck me. This sucks. Uh, I'm sorry for the language. I'm trying. I'm trying. Um, I'm sorry. I'm out of breath, but it's really tight in here. Um, so yeah, you have to literally drop all the plastics, the steering column. And then when I do this, I'm just going to put a washer. So if I have to do this again, only thing I have to do is just remove the nuts, which are obviously easy to get to. And you also have to pull the pin here uh, for the actual, uh, oh shoot, for the actual brake. Uh, besides that, you're done. It's very, very simple. It's just that one sucks. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and do this. All right, guys. So I must have, I forgot, must have done it on this car too. I could have swore I didn't, but if you look up here, let's get under here real quick. If you look here, a little, oh, come on. If you look there, see if I get my headband, see the silver? Those are just regular washers under there. So I must have put washers on this back in the day. Um, so that is awesome. Um, this makes this a lot freaking easier now. So all I gotta do is literally pull this out. And uh, yeah, now those washers are gonna fall down. So I need to put something under it here. But yeah, that makes me super happy. So um, now putting it back in is gonna suck. So I'm gonna have to have one person, you know, I'll have to hold washers up there when they slide it back in. But yeah, I'd rather do this anytime, just getting it out because dropping the dash sucks. So these are the three washers that I had up in there. Didn't realize it, man. I did that when I tried to spray paint it years ago, which is out right here now. Um, didn't realize I put those up there. So I remember now like, thinking back to it that it was a pain in the butt to do, or it was, it was my wife's that was a pain. But let's get it to focus here. Uh, what I am going to do, if it'll focus, come on, focus. 
I'm instead of doing these three washers, I'm gonna go to Lowe's or wherever, measure this out here, see what the thickness is and just get one washer so it's easier to put back up in there. And again, don't have to worry about three separate ones like this. So gonna measure these out and go get some new bolts. So brake booster is now off to paint now, so that's good. Uh, next thing I'm working on here is I'm working on the intake manifold again. Some scratches and stuff. This is all underneath, but it's typical. It needs probably needs cleaned up. I really, I mean, look at the water splotch and stuff. Um, it's in an engine bay. I'm gonna have to ask for new seals too, because I'm not sure if those are still any good. Um, because obviously they've been on the car once, and once they seal, they kind of have like a squish to them. Um, but I do need to do or do what I do need to do here is remove this. This is the factory check valve for the brake booster, and just like my wife's car, I'm gonna do a red horse setup. So for this. On the MCC low the antique manifold, I use the back fitting. And it's an eighth inch MPT. I do an eighth inch to a six AN fitting. Uh, the whole size is damn close to the same. It's a little bit smaller on this size, on this side, uh, but it won't hurt anything. So the eighth inch MPT size is a little bit smaller. But again, I have it over here and it hasn't hurt anything. Brakes feel great. Um, so I'm gonna use that to put it on. And then from there, you need to use a six AN female to female fitting. And then let's go ahead and grab the rest of the fittings here that I'm going to use. Grab this, grab this, boom, boom, boom. I don't have the female to female right now. I have to get one from Red Horse, but you'll use a female to female that comes off here that gives you your 90. Then you'll also get a Red Horse check valve. So they have a check valve that has AN fittings on both sides. You can pick 4 AN, 6 AN, or 8 AN, whichever you prefer. Then from there, we'll do another 60 degree fitting that'll then go up to the brake booster. From there, it'll go to this 120 degree fitting. From that fitting, this is what adapts to the nipple on the brake booster itself. So these are what you guys will need and two more fittings, or sorry, uh, one 60 degree fitting and the check valve. Uh, again, this is all from Red Horse. Uh, that is the part number for the uh, eighth inch MPT to the 6AN. The rest are pretty standard. Well, this is the one that you guys also want. This is what I use for the brake booster. You gotta do a little manipulation with this. It doesn't slide over perfect. Um, so I have to like use some washers and stuff. It doesn't fit perfect guys, but it does work and I got it to work with my wife's. You'll figure it out, you gotta play with it. So just wanna make you guys aware of that. So gonna go ahead and remove this and get that out. I always use this thread tape also. It's a liquid thread tape, PTFE. Now you don't need PTFE for this, but it is a liquid. So let me see if I can spin the cap off with one hand. Come on, Ryan. Yeah, we got the strength, let go, baby. All right, come on, oh my God, it's just hard to do with one hand. There we go, it's literally, a liquid. So instead of it being a tape, it's a liquid and you don't need that. You just press it off on the sides and kind of get it all pushed out of the way. as like my music playing in the background, but that's what I put in the threads just to make sure this seals because when it comes to this stuff, I just do not want it to leak. So yeah. All right, as you guys saw there earlier too, I had made this hose, right? This is the 6AN hose that goes down to the rack itself. Uh, I already had that 120, then added the 6AN. I was debating, I'm like, you know, there's nothing wrong with these fittings, they haven't leaked on me, but just looking at them, this hose, look at me and just, look how much it's collapsed in. It feels really stiff, like, so the, so the thing is with real Viton hose, it's really flexible, right? And it's very resistant to any type of chemicals. Um, like the hose on my car for fuel-wise, like it's still very pliable and fun. PTFE is a very stiff hose, but Viton's not. I'm starting to think this might have been uh, Viton and this might have been just like regular rubber hosing. Um, so it might be why, I mean, it is like, I mean, it is rock hard. Like, like it's not pliable at all. Nothing like this is. This is way more pliable and easier to bend. Same with this. I mean, this is very flimsy, right? And it's supposed to be that way. That's the whole point. So I think this might be on its last leg and it's just don't feel like putting it back in for it to leak and me get irritated. So, and the fitting started to turn colors. Um, again, I've had that issue in the past. Her car doesn't do it, but my car does. Same engine, same car. Uh, doesn't, I don't understand. Same fluid, same, I don't, whatever. But for some reason, these fittings turn colors. And if you say, well, it's heat because of anodizing and stuff, but that turned purple and that didn't. So it's an anodizing failure, not um, for the company, whatever made these for powerhouse raising. The anodizing failed because the anodizing here did not fail, same with the cap. So kind of sucks, but it is what it is. So what I'm gonna do is remove the fitting here. There's probably still some fluid in it. So I'm gonna put a rag under here, remove this fitting. And then again, we're gonna use these new 90s from Red Horse. Make sure who makes these for tight, or, uh, Titan Powerhouse Racing, good Lord, they'd probably kill me. Um, again, man, it literally collapsed here too. Look at that, literally, look at it. It pinched in, look at that. Very, very weird. I wonder why I did that. Never seen it before, so I'm kind of curious. So again, let's get this off. I actually might take this apart because now I'm curious why I did that. I mean, look how it's very stiff, mm, concerning. 
So I also have these two different wrenches from Red Horse. One is for removing a fitting and one's for making a fitting. And you're probably like, what the heck's that mean? Which I'll show you here. So there's actually different sizing for this area here of fitting versus this. This will use the standard 8AN versus this, which is a 10 or 10, I'm sorry. There's 10 and six, so these do both. One, if you can see here, says, it's hard to see on camera. One just says regular dash 10, the other one's in dash 10S. The other one is for actually putting it together. This is slightly larger and it uses the S version of it. Um, that's not just specific to to uh, Red Horse, that's all the company. So I didn't realize that till you know about a year or so ago, which makes, makes it a lot easier. I've always had to use adjustables. Now I actually have the actual uh, wrench needed for it. I don't like using adjustables because they do come loose when you're trying to do it versus this, which is, you know, it's a fixed wrench. Much, much nicer to have, really like these. So let's go ahead, get this off. See if this is gonna spin on, oh no, don't spin on me, baby. Come on. Come on, Jimmy, don't spin on me. There we go. Wow, that was actually really loose. That's, again, a concern, little concerning how loose that was. Oh, wow, I know why now. There we go. It's the actual top fitting. Yeah, I'll have to take a look at that. The actual fitting up above was loose. Let's see how bad this is. I'm wondering if this is going to leak on me or not. We're about to find out. Guess not. It's a good sign. Yeah. Oh, makes me happy. Yes, actually. Let's see if I actually use the 10A inside of this to actually. There we go. See, this is the one you have to use to crank that down, get that back tight. But now that this is off, what I'm going to do is lay this out and use this as my layout because I need it to be this length. So this works out perfect, and now I can make it for this. And what I'm doing, guys, is just kind of lining this up. Makes it a little bit easier when you already have a hose. Looks like something happened here. Look at that. Do you guys see that? See where it's. I'm not sure what that is. Something failed there though, it's like chunky. I think it's part of the fitting actually failing. So maybe it is time for these to go. Um, but this new line is a Viton line, so don't have to worry about that. And we know that these um, Red Horse fittings are ED5 and uh, transmission fluid safe, so I'm good with those. So I'm just gonna lay this out and cut it, use my silver Sharpie, be good to go. So now I can use, I wanna see if the 10 works. So see, this is my normal 10 guys, right? This won't work, but if I use this 10S, this should slip over and see, now I can spin this around. Unfortunately, it's too close to my dang workbench, so I'm gonna have to keep coming off of it like so, just spin it. Um, I should offset this a little bit more so I have a little bit more room. But this, this is how it's supposed to work, guys. Very simple. Um, I like having these wrenches, again, for this reason, I don't have to worry about it marking up anything too. When they come loose, that's where you start to dig into your fittings. Um, with this, you don't have to worry about it. I like that they also have the relief notches in it there, so at the edges, it's not digging in just at the edge of the fitting. Uh, it allows you to get a little bit better torque on it too. So now I can actually crank it down, keep going. You also are not supposed to crank your fittings down to the very end. What do I mean by that? You're not supposed to do it to it's like smashed up against the next fitting. There's actually supposed to be a very small gap you're supposed to leave, um, just how it's designed. I forget, there's an actual like an exact amount. I never do it, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Um, but there is an exactness to it. <sighs> 10 fittings are a little bit tighter. <clears throat> so the thing that's nice with a fixed wrench, I'm able to wrench on it or Put a little bit more torque onto it without worry about it slipping. I mean, look, the whole metal table is moving right now, guys. It's definitely, it takes some effort, uh, that is for sure. Make sure, I just don't wanna, how much more should we go here, I think? We're dang close, I think I should go another turn or so. I think that's about right. Maybe another turn just to be safe. That's a little off, needs a little bit more. Again, I'm just being something you can't even see, being anal retentive about. There you go, first fitting done. So, okay guys, the reason I do put this fitting on first, so now I can better line it up with this one, I'm gonna have to stretch it out here, do it off camera here. Stretch it out, line it up with what is uh, this fitting here. So I'm gonna stop about here because that's where it starts to thread normally. So I'm gonna stop right about there and that's where I'll cut this hose at and then I'll be able to put it on. Gives me that room that I need to get this done. Very simple guys, very, very basic. I'm done finishing up with those lines now. I actually, last night too, um, 
started painting the power steering pump here. Took it apart, taped it off there. Um, painted the whole thing. The back section is usually silver. I did this on my wife's. Did a better job on mine. This is my wife's. Usually I don't care, but the factory intake manifold goes over it. But when you remove that, it sits right here, and this is usually all rusty. Um, good Sem paint is all I use, and it's still on her car holding up, even with all the heat and stuff. Really, really impressed with Sem paint. Uh, highly recommend that stuff. So yeah, turned out really, really well. Um, yeah, just been fantastic. So on my car, I wanted to make sure it looks nice too. Here's the other thing, like come back to the heat thing. Look, see how nice and black the powerhouse racing fitting is still? I don't know what the hell happened on my car, but is it over here? Look, same fitting, same company. So it's obviously something going on. It doesn't make sense. Like it must've just been a fluke thing. Look at the bottom, the black's still good there. Around the area here, still black. Super, super freaking weird. The little play, plate adapter, whatever you want to call it. I don't understand. I don't get it. The white stuff is from me just cleaning the um, power steering pump. But yeah, super, super weird stuff, guys. I don't don't quite get it, but it's whatever, I guess. Um, just super freaking weird. But it is what it is. So again, guys, hope this video was good. Um, yeah, trying to pump these out. Actually got another video after this already starting to go. I'm really trying here, getting back to my old swing. It's probably gonna slow down again because I've had time here because of Christmas and everything else. I've had more days off. The girls are starting to do better. My wife's not working. She's a full-time stay-at-home mom now. So I have more things going in my corner at this moment in time to help me. Um, got more videos coming too because again, took the brake booster off. That's all off now, off the paint. I wanna show you guys how to make the fittings for that. Trying to detail more stuff out, kind of like I did there, showing how to make the fittings and putting them together. Yeah, so trying to get everything together and try to get this thing done. Again, guys, thank you very much for tuning in today. Appreciate your support, and I'll talk to you later. Peace.